Two years ago, I was able to see how amazing of a community Park City is. I was able to see all of the things we are capable of as a whole, and I was able to see the community come together in a time of need. More specifically, my time of need. Two years ago, on October 1st, I lost my brother Sam to a ski accident in Australia. His death took a huge toll on my family, but throughout our whole journey, the people of Park City were there for us, as both individuals and a whole. In the weeks leading up to and following Sam's death, I saw how truly remarkable this community was. We were united front, ready to face whatever the world threw at us. I was humbled and in awe of this beautiful community. Given the worst circumstances, we were our best selves. And at that time in my life, and I thought I had so little to be thankful for, this little ski town I proudly call home reminded me that I had love and support around every corner. Two years have since passed, and the community that helped my family and I through that horrible time in my life no longer exists. I am no longer humbled to state that I am from Park City, Utah. In fact, I am occasionally embarrassed to be from a place divided by rich white kids, drugs from unknown places, and a hate sparked from a newfound entitlement fed to us on a silver spoon. To summarize that all into a single phrase, we lost our amazingness but it hasn't always been that way. I remember being 10 years old when my mom sat me down in front of the TV and showed me the movie Heathers. Now, if you haven't seen Heathers, let me explain it to you. Summarized in a single phrase, it's a movie about a clique of jealous girls literally killing each other just to get to the top. And why did my mom have me watch this? The goal was to show me that mean girls do exist and that I should never be like them. But in the end, I really didn't take what way much from the film. Why? Because in my mind, girls like that didn't even exist. I just thought the people who wrote movies like Heather's had wild imaginations. Flash forward to one year later. I had finally made it to middle school, the place I'd been dreaming of for what felt like forever. And I'm pleased to say it fully met my expectations. I made so many new friends and was always excited to learn. And at the end of seventh grade, when I went back and watched Heather's, I had the exact same reaction. That's not real. That doesn't happen here. Then came junior high. My friend group had gotten smaller, but I had narrowed it down to the people I really, truly enjoyed having around. By then, I had stumbled upon the movie Mean Girls along with the rest of the world. And while my friends and I laughed at Regina George and her clever creation we all know as the Burn Book, where insults and gossip were written without remorse, I thought nothing more of it than an enjoyable comedy to watch at my next slumber party. And when I questioned its validity, I once again credited its witty writers and their wild imaginations, because I had never been exposed to something like that, which meant it must be fake. Last came sophomore year, where I had my first look at the hate I'd convinced myself didn't exist in Park City. On my drive to school, I looked out the bus window and saw the word illegal written on the homes of my classmates right across from the high school for all of us students to see. At lunch, my friends and I discussed the incident, but by the next day, a group of students had already taken action and painted over the hateful term. Our community praised them, but failed to acknowledge the problem. Why had someone felt the need to write something so hateful on the homes of my classmates? And why hadn't we taken advantage of this situation to teach our students right from wrong? To teach them respect. Instead, we simply painted over the problem and pretended it didn't exist. Little did we know, the hate we had begun to see at the high school had already started to spread to the grades below. Now, I'd like you to close your eyes and picture a dropper full of red food coloring. Below it, a petri dish full of crystal clear water, pure and still. Now imagine what happens when just one drop of food coloring is released. It will start small, but within seconds, it will have expanded to all corners of the dish. The water that was once pure has been infected with red dye. And while just one drop was released, the whole dish has turned red. I like to think of the water as our community, and the food coloring as hate and disrespect. While the hate was sparked here at the high school, we have soon seen its effects in many of our students and their schools. At the high school, we see not only hateful terms written on the homes of our classmates, but students attacking other students online. 
We see examples of racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, and so many more hateful things we publish for all to see. Even worse, at our junior high, we have kids vandalizing school property by illustrating swastikas on lockers and running around the hall saying, Heil Hitler. And lastly, at our middle school, the place I loved so, so much, we have a group of girls who go around bullying their fellow classmates. And if you even try and leave the party, you too will face the wrath of the group. You may know them better as the Wolf Pack. So I ask you, how did the places that always made me feel so welcomed and excited to learn turn into environments where students feel scared and threatened to go to school? I speak not with criticism, but with concern. Who have we become? More specifically, who have our children become? Our parents? No, not our parents. Our parents are the people who taught us the golden rule, treat others the way you wish to be treated. Our parents, the people who have worked endless hours to give us this life we've become so accustomed to. No, we did not inherit this illness from them. Instead, we have contracted this disease and we have passed it on to the generation below. We have infected them with hate. It is hard for me to see a place that showed me so much love and respect fail to do the same for others. I have and always will of my community, which is why it is so hard to see this place falling apart. If we are the future, then what do we have to offer to the world? Sure, we have our endless privileges, our wealth, our education, our appearance, but we've lost what makes us human, our respect, our compassion, and our values. So now ask yourself, when you leave Park City, what will you bring to the world? Will it be love or will it be hate? Thank you.